Uh, check this out. I absolutely love traditional Japanese rooms. They are just so inviting and serene and really relaxing. Uh, so what we're going to do in this Lightroom tutorial is uh, let me show you actually the original first. Okay, this is the original shot that I took on a recent trip to Nagano. And uh, whenever we do the photo workshops, we stay in traditional inns like this in uh, the uh, prefecture of Nagano. So going from the original, which is a good shot, and uh, some would say they love the deep moodiness of this, uh, I usually tend to sort of um, fill in the shadows a little bit. So we're going to even out the exposure using the Adobe Lightroom CC mobile app. Yeah. So, okay, let's begin. So I'm going to go to reset which is at the bottom, I'm going to go reset to all. And this simply takes us back to the original picture. So the first thing I would like to do is straighten up the lines. It may be a little bit hard to see, but the lines, the vertical lines are not all that straight. Now the easiest way to do it is at the very bottom. And we're going to go to something called geometry. Now I will say straight up that geometry is an advanced, it's not an advanced feature, sorry, it's a a feature that you have to pay for. That's why on your version you may see geometry have a little blue star. If you feel that this is a feature that's worthy of your photos, then you'll pay the X amount of dollars. It's definitely less than ten dollars. It's um, maybe six or seven and it's really worthwhile. Okay, and you can also try it just for a month. So you can sign up with Adobe for a month. If you have any of the Adobe Creative Cloud photography or Lightroom plans, it's already included. All you have to do is sign in. So let's begin. Now, with regards to upright, you see the off here. If we tap it and go to auto, uh, auto usually does the trick. Let me show you. Okay, that's this is the original and this is auto. Now, what auto does, let me close this here, is it simply scans everything that is vertical in the picture and it uh, obviously straightens it to what it feels is a good architectural shot. And I believe it has smart technology to understand that this is indeed an interior house or an interior room. So it'll see the beams and make them vertical. And also at the very top, it will make the horizontal beams straight as well. Okay, so that's good. Um, next thing, if we want to brighten up this room, if I go to light at the very bottom and I go to exposure, I'm sorry, I'm on contrast. Let me go to exposure. Okay, just get contrast back to zero. If I go to exposure and brighten everything, as you can see, the window is grossly blown out. Now, for effect, you can actually keep it that way if you like that look. However, I tend to want to have detail in the window because this is what's called in Japanese a shoji, which would be a rice paper screen. And I like the detail, so I don't want to lose that detail. So what I will probably do is use exposure only to the extent that the side um, panels don't get blown out. So for example, if I go any higher than this, the panels over here are going to get just too bright, okay? So this looks to be good for the sides. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go down to shadows and shadows, I can increase the shadows to whatever extent I want. I'll go really high. This is no good. But essentially I'm just wondering, uh, sort of debating how much shadow area do I want? I don't want the shadows totally to be filled because then we lose three dimensionality. And in architectural photography, it's always good to have some element of shadow or almost always good, I should say. Okay, so that is looking fairly good. Now, what we can do to deal with a little bit of a blown out aspect in the shoji screen is we can actually go to highlights and bring the highlights down universally or sorry, we call it globally to see how that's working really well to bring the detail back. However, the problem with what's called global adjustments is that it's adjusting the entire picture. I don't want, sorry, I don't want my highlights to be reduced on this panel over here. I only want the highlights to be reduced on the shoji screen and possibly the table. Okay, so in that case, what I'm going to do is go down to my 
uh, selective tool, which is at the bottom left. I'm going to go to plus, and I'm going to go to my brush tool, and I'm just going to start brushing on that which I want to have the highlights reduced. And as you can see, the window is getting a little bit reddish, and that's normal. Let me do a little bit on the table here. Okay, so the red is uh, is mask. It's a uh, it's sort of showing me the person who's editing what will be adjusted. So, for example, we now have uh, our selected area, which is red, and I'm going to go down to light, and I'm only I'm going to adjust exposure just to show you what happens. I'm not going to use exposure. But do you see how only the area, let me back up to show you better, only the area that I made red is being adjusted. This is very effective. It's a selective adjustment tool. What I really want though is highlights. So I'm going to go to highlights and if I bring highlights down, as you can see, the rest of the picture is not touched. Let me zoom in to show you. So only the tabletop and the shoji screen. So I tend to think that if I go to minus 46 on highlights, let me zoom in, I still see a lot of great detail in the shoji screen, the paper screens. Let me look at the table. The table looks really good. And as you can see, nothing was affected uh, with regards to the highlights on the side, uh, on these side panels. So I'm really liking this exposure. So if it's, you know, this is, of course, subjective. You may want it brighter or darker, but I think it looks good for my purposes. So I'm going to, at the very bottom, do the check mark. And just to clean up the picture a little bit, as you can see, the, the room safe is down here in the bottom left. And there's nothing too bad on the right. So I'm going to go to my crop tool. And because I want to crop out the safe, I'm just going to crop in like that. And the problem is, is that this is going to now be unbalanced. So I go to the right side and I'm going to crop. But I want you to take a look at this. Do you see how we have rule of thirds, sort of rule of thirds, uh, sort of a tic-tac-toe grid? And if I center myself with regards to the crop on the middle, sort of the center, um, how do you say this? I'm, I'm ha I have equidistance on the left side and the right side of the shoji screen or the window. This is perfect. So this is exactly what we want. So we're going to go to the bottom and click the check mark. And here we go. So this is the image. And if you use the mobile app, if you tap your finger anywhere in the picture, it will show you the before and the after. So this is a lesson in selective adjustments. And I really hope that um, you can actually practice this with your own pictures. So maybe take a picture of an interior of your own house and give it a go, and it should work out really well. Again, you will have to upgrade to the paid plan for the Lightroom mobile uh, version of Lightroom CC, but I feel it's very worth it. And it, maybe you want to try it out for a month and then cancel. It's a really low risk investment. Okay, so that's it for this picture. I hope you enjoyed that Lightroom CC mobile editing tutorial. Really enjoyed making it for you. And what else would I do when I'm waiting in a car for half an hour outside a mall for my teenage daughters? So if you'd like to stay in that stunning traditional Japanese room with the wonderful tatami mats and on a beautiful futon in the mountains of Nagano, why not join me on one of my Japan photo tours? All you have to do is check out www.markhemmings.com and uh, just go through the international photo workshops that I offer and pick the one on Japan and you'll have all the information. I would love to see you in Tokyo, Nagano, and Kyoto uh, during one of the tours and we will learn a lot of great photography and have a wonderful time eating excellent food and staying in traditional inns. Okay, that's it for me. Until next time, Please keep checking back. I'm going to be doing these posts, these tutorials regularly. Bye-bye.